Good morning, guys. Silly question. Have you ever wondered what a three times teleconverter can do with one of the best Minolta lenses ever made, the f2.8 200, uh, with an LAEA5 adapter on a Sony A6600? That's a whole lot of numbers. All you need to know, guys, is we're shooting at 900 millimeters with some old screw drive. Fantastic stuff. It's not cheap, it's still expensive because it was the best of the best back in the day. But let's see, 900 millimeters is a very light setup for 900 millimeters. It will autofocus with this setup. It will focus down to maybe four and a half feet for closeness. And uh, let's just take some shots in the yard and see what it can do. Why? Because I just feel like going crazy. I'm waiting for the FedEx guy and I have a 500 millimeter Minolta autofocus reflex lens coming in today that I wanted to do some testing on. It's not here. So let's just go crazy and try something that uh, most people don't even know or care about. <laughs> All right, guys, I'll show you what I'm going to take a picture of. There's some nice red leaves right here in the sunlight. We're going to back up a little bit so we can get more. It's so close at 900 millimeters is what we're getting, right? 200 uh, millimeter lens times three is 600 millimeters on an APS-C 1.5 crop factor, 900 millimeters, okay? Now, I'm no dummy. This is not an easy uh, lens combination to use. We are going to shoot at one one thousandth of a second, so you need really good light to do that. And that means our ISO is going to be bumped up to 800. And there's the shot we can get. I'll put it on the screen. Handheld. We're not gonna. We're not messing around with tripods today. We're just gonna see what can you get carrying this little light 900 millimeter setup around. Handheld. Let's do it. So I'm actually using tracking with the camera as well because at that extended range, 900 millimeters, everything in the frame. I'm trying to take a picture of little tiny, teeny tiny little berries. Okay, just for example. And so I'm actually using autofocus with tracking because it's moving in and it's all over just for my my hand shaking as I'm trying to hold the camera steady from about five feet over there. Uh, so tracking is actually working really well. Trying to film this screen while tracking to show you guys it working really well is not working really well. So you just have to take my word for it. Try it for yourself, guys. Tracking, um, flexible spot, tracking uh, is working pretty good with this combination LAEA5 three times adapter and Minolta 200 okay let's get some shots here <laughs> need an assistant or a third arm to film the back of this I want to film what I what I'm actually doing setting wise and everything on here for you guys but uh, it doesn't matter what matters is the end result take a look at the images now I'm sure we're gonna get a little bit of purple fringing with this combination uh, Wide open, it's showing f5.6, so we can't get down to 2.8 with that three times converter on there. And like I said, we've got to bump the ISO up to keep our shutter speed fast enough, even in bright sunlight, uh, to get pictures without motion blur in them. But it is autofocusing, and it's, it's actually autofocusing pretty well. Better than it ever did on any of my old Sony or Minolta cameras. So the uh, <laughs> the mirrorless A6600 or any of those cameras in that series with this adapter focus better than the original cameras that you would have bought this gear with. Okay, I took a picture of a Blue Jay. He was across the yard, way over there, like 80 feet away in that tree. And uh, we got him. 
I'm pretty sure he was blue already, but I'm pretty sure there was some blue and purple fringing around him just from what I can see on the screen. So hey, I never said this was going to be a great combination, but I'll show you that image and then I'll show you with two clicks that I can fix it and remove the chromatic aberration. We've talked about it before, guys. You have to have a full set of skills. You can't just take the photos. You have to be able to fix the photos in post, especially if you're going to use old gear. And I did a whole video series on how to do that stuff. Nobody wanted to watch it. So it's, I guess it's my secret how to fix this stuff. But anyway, that's the result you're going to get with this on, uh, you know, birds with the sky background. You're going to get some purple fringing. Got some really cool water drops and a few of the poplar leaves that are down on the ground here. Let's find one and take a photo of late fall morning water drops. We'll come up with a better name for the actual image. I don't know. Pristine morning dew. I don't know. Pristine morning dew. There you go. Would anyone in their right mind spend 800 bucks on this lens, $250 on this adapter, and another $300 on this adapter to get these results? No, they wouldn't, absolutely not. But if you've got all the old stuff sitting in the closet like I do, and you wanna try it out and see what works, you can actually get some pretty decent shots with this setup. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend buying this, guys. Just, I mean, I've got the Tamron 15600 E mount lens, okay, which is the latest and greatest as of this spring for this camera. It is amazing. It will, the results are 500% better than what you're gonna get with this old stuff. It, autofocus is instantaneous with the new lenses. This thing is like lock on, lock on, but it is working. It is autofocusing. You know, 10 years ago, like I say, it never worked this good on any of my old cameras. So it's actually working better. It's performing better now than it ever has before. And it's still rubbish. One area that this setup is going to beat that new Tamron lens is in weight. This might weigh whole camera, everything, two pounds. Okay. And I'm going to say two pounds, maybe, maybe two and a half pounds. The lens, the 150-600 Tamron lens alone weighs five pounds. Okay, so yeah, there is a little, I can, you know, you could just throw this in a pack sack or on your, your neck strap and you could carry this all day long. You won't even feel it. Whereas the other one, you know it's there. Are the results better? Hell yeah. <laughs> it's worth carrying that extra five pounds in my mind, but it's fun to play with this, right? It's all about fun. Fun factor? Yeah, this has got it. Look at that. Look at who's a good boy. I told him to sit and stay so I could take his picture and then I had to walk all the way back here. Come on, buddy. Good boy. <laughs> you can't hire help like that. I'm telling you, he's awesome. These old Minolta lenses were old when I bought them. They were 20 some years old. You know, when I bought them, they're now probably 35 or even older. Uh, I'm not sure what year the 200 2.8 came out, but it was a long time ago. It was before my time. And uh, so at first I bought these things because I liked taking images with old lenses, cheap old lenses. OK, this wasn't one of the ones I originally bought. This is one of the last ones I bought. I bought the old Minolta stuff. You could find some lenses, you know, 30 bucks, 50 bucks, and you would get like the 2040, or you would get the. I'm trying to think of what there were some really good ones. Uh, the old beer can, you know, 70 200. I think you, you get one for about 70 bucks at the time. They were really decent lenses for what they were. And that obsession of buying old lenses and seeing how good of images I could get with them turned into a, a bit of a collector. Uh, thing right and then I started collecting and, and as I collected the lenses got more and more expensive don't fall for the hype yes these are excellent collectible lovely old lenses I really they are amazing they just don't compare to today's stuff 
Ah, now there's some nice red leaves shining in the morning sun. Let's take a picture of that. That'll be a good one. This video is about getting out of the house and finding my photography passion again. Playing with lenses, playing with different combinations just to see what we can achieve. It's not about saying, oh, I'm getting the best results with this, because no, if I want to do that, I'll use the brand new $2,000 stuff, right? Well, this wasn't much cheaper, really. So what is the point of this video, guys, if we know that this gear is not really great? It's the same as every video I make. The point is to remind you to get off your ass and get off the couch. If you're a photographer, get some of your old gear out, play with it. If you're not, if you're a four-wheeling guy or a metal detecting guy or whatever, get off the couch. Don't just watch Gary's adventures. Do. Watch them two, three, four, five times. And then get off the couch and go make your own adventure. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you in the next adventure. My next adventure. But in the meantime, you can have a few of your own. I'm just editing the photos with the three times teleconverter and the 200 Minolta lens. And I gotta say guys, I'm actually, I was maybe a little hard on the sharpness of that lens. It's not terrible. I'm actually, I'm fairly impressed. I like the images, they turned out all right. Sharpness isn't everything. So just a little add on to the end. I like the photos.